Hey everyone, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So I'm going to show you how I've made this cute, I'm calling it a platform gift box or platform box because you have the platform where I've stuck these five Lindor chocolate bunnies but then here you have your gift box. So you could pop, you know, a present there and then they've got the chocolate treats or you could just fill it with chocolate eggs. Obviously it doesn't have to be Easter. So when you see me put it all together, this can, you know, be for, you know, many occasions. But I just thought it was quite a nice way. And to be honest, the idea has come from how I brought these ones here. So you can buy these loose or you can buy them like this. And these ones were from... I think it was Waitrose where they were together, but I've seen them in other superstores as well. So... Because it's kind of got the green grass and then the sky, I thought, oh, I quite, you know, I like that. But let's make it look a little bit, I think, better. So, yeah, that's where I've got the idea from to do it. Um, like I said, you can pick these up. I think sometimes they do like three for two and things like that. So, um, but these are, I would have thought, readily available, you know, outside of the UK as well. So really nice little size gift box. So let's get started. So the paper pad I've used for the sky is my scenes paper pad. And it's this one here. And then I pulled out my picket fence that I got in, I've got three colours, pink, yellow and the white. And I got these from, I think, The Works a couple of years ago now. Um, but again, if I can find them, I'll link them. So I've just cut down the size that I need. It's quite easy to cut. I cut these using my, um, these ones here. They're good for cutting through like soft metals and stuff. So I've cut that. I'll give you the measurements in a moment. And then I've got all the grass and the bits and pieces there. And then I've got my little sign there that says Hoppy Easter. And I just used one of my stamps. It was an old magazine stamp, that one. So to make one of the boxes, you want a piece of eight by nine and a half cardstock. So first of all, you want to score along the nine and a half side and you're going to score up eight inches and nine. Then pop it along the eight inch side so you've got the half inch piece that you've just scored along the top here. You're going to score at half an inch, two inches, three inches and four and a half. You're then going to score at five and a half, past the first score line and down to the second. And then if you flip it, score again at five and a half down to the first score line. That's just a guide there of where you need to cut because you want to keep this all as your solid this is the back piece here and then this is what all folds in to create the box you'll then need if i give you the measurements for these the pattern paper there is two and a half by six and three quarters and then the grass pieces i've got seven by two and seven by one and a half i've already done that one and then this is just to line the top here if you want to and that's seven by just under one and a half. OK, so first of all, you want to fold and burnish all of your score lines. I'm using a 300 GSM cardstock, but any anything above 200 will work with this one. OK, so first of all, we will cut our kind of back piece here away. So if you have it, so you've got the half inch tab along the top and the half inch tab along the right hand side. You want to cut down this score line here to that five and a half one and then just cut that one away like so and then you're going to cut down so you've got one two cut down that second one again down to that five and a half score line here and then just cut both of those away like so then we'll work along this side here so now I've got the half inch tab along the bottom and the half inch tab along my right hand side so I bring it up close here you've got first score line and second so we're going to cut down all of these ones past the first down to the second So these two smaller ones at the end there, just take that away. OK. And then these are going to be the side pieces that fold in. So just kind of imagine that end piece isn't there. You then want to cut that piece in half. So just cut it away like that. So you just want about half an inch left like so. OK. 
and then you're going to remove all of this piece here so you can fold those two under and just cut that all the way so just hold that up like so so you should have your half inch here this is the eight inch width along here and you would have had the other half inch piece along the bottom so that's where you want to be and then you can cut a little wedge off of the corners here remember don't go too mad because you want your box to lock when it closes so by just leaving a little bit still and then just take a little bit off of here it's gonna mean that you can fold that in and it locks into place so that's all going to come around like this you can see they're going to fold in and then that's going to go in there so this piece you now want to add a little finger pull so if you don't have a little circle punch like that you could just cut a little triangle shape there or a square shape but now that's just going to make it much easier when we need to open it so that's that end so now if you flip it around to this end here this corner you can take away i'm just going to take a little wedge off of those two there as well so now you can just cut up each of these score lines like so and then if you just fold the rectangle pieces under the square ones you can just take a little wedge off of each side because you're going to completely seal this end I mean if you wanted to you could have it completely open so I mean you could have just like a tray effect so you could you know not have any of these pieces and then have another tray that slides in so imagine there's a hand and you pull out a tray so you could also do that as well so if I just lay that there that's the kind of shape you want so now we can start to put it together so I'm going to use my quick grab glue and you're going to add that all along the long bottom tab and if you fold that over and then fold that whole piece down you'll see that the, it all lines up because that's the side of this piece so you know you've got it in the right place and if I fold that back that way just give it a good burnish okay so we've got this shape so now you'll be able to test your box so fold in your sides there and then that one like I said you want it to lock in like that so it's nice and snug I mean you could have it so that it comes it opens this way you'd have your finger pull there but then obviously that's going to be you know exposed so it's up to you close that one off first and then it's going to make easy easy it's now going to make it easier to square this end off so I'm going to fold the base one down first then fold a side in another side and then finally that one there and then you can open up this end and just put a ruler or something in there just so you can push down so it's nice and secure so that's now the box so like i said at the beginning you could decorate this for anything now you know christmas you have a nice christmas scene with the rooftops and then santa and his sleigh scene kind of behind there Stands up really nicely, so it's a good little table favour size, I think. So first of all, before I start adding my pattern paper, I'm just going to cut a little curve on the corners there. Now this piece is too big, so I thought I could cut that right, but this is a two and a half, so it needs to be two and a quarter. I can't remember the measurement I said at the beginning, but I will change that. So two and a quarter by six and three quarters yeah so that is so that's correct so again i just want to cut a little bit of shape in the corners there it just softens the whole project when you add the little curved corners there so that one's going to be stuck there and then i'm going to stick this one on the top here I've cut it so it's exactly the same width. If you want to bring it in so you have a little border, either end you can do. But you can see there I've done it so it covers literally right along the top. So I'm going to stick all that down.
Okay, so that's stuck down. Then I've got my two layers of grass here. So I've just got two different sizes. I just think they look quite nice. And I'm going to have my oh, my fence in between the two there. So this is completely optional because if I just sit that there, you can see it looks really nice, you know, without the fence as well. But just to create the grass effect, I mean, if you've got the vegetables cut, uh, scissors, you can use that. But I wanted to have a little bit of a different design. You can also use dyes, you know, all sorts. There's, there's quite a few things out there now to give you this effect. You can use a stencil and then kind of draw around it. You see there, I'm just cutting just different heights until you get something that looks like that. So I'm going to stick that one directly onto there. I'm then going to use hot glue just on the backs, just along the bottom there. Stick that one down and then I've got foam to then stick that one on there. And then I will be able to just pop my little sign in there. that's everything stuck down and then I just need to add these so I mean they're lovely on their own you know they're great to just pop in like little gift bags as extra treats but we're paper crafters we like to uh, change things up a little so they just pop out and then you can either attach these using foam pads you could use a glue dot but I've actually used hot glue now there's you know you've got the foil on the bottom and these are solid pieces of chocolate so you, know, you might get a tiny bit of melting at the bottom for a short time, but it's not going to, you know, take away from the, the shape and everything. And it's still going to taste lovely. But I just found with the hot glue, you know, they're definitely not going to fall off. So you've got the bow on one side and not on the other, because I did originally have them all facing to the right. And then I thought, oh, kept seeing bits of the foiling where it joined and then realised actually they're supposed to be that way. So just check you got your bow. So I'm going to stick my one down in the middle first. So I just some glue on the bottom there I always like to just cool it ever so slightly and then start off with the middle and get that one in place and then just work your way out and there's the finished box so you could add little easter eggs all running along here you know, you can put a lot more on this if you want. And you can have this higher as well. And you could have maybe a big bow on there. You could turn it into a card box. So you could have, you know, your space on the back to write your message. And because that's all sealed on the bottom there, you could also have this this way. And I've got similar. I've got like a, one, I think I've put tea lights in it. Um, and I've got another one as well. So I do have a few of those kind of box cards. So I'll link all that up here. And there'll be tutorials up now as well if you want to watch those next. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial that I've shared today. I will link the product that I've used in the description box below. And like I said, these chocolates are pretty easy to get hold of in most superstores. And yeah, thank you for watching as always. If you've enjoyed today and you haven't subscribed, make sure you click the subscribe button and then the notification bell, because that way you'll be notified every time I upload something new. And like I said, check out the tutorials popping up now because you might want to watch one of those next. See you all again soon. Bye.